Here are a couple of additional typical examples when it comes to finding equations of lines. So we've got two problems here. First, number one, find an equation of the line described by each scenario, which obviously there's a two-part problem, A and B. Let's go through these, and then we've got one other problem on the next page. 1A, the line with slope negative 3 that goes through the point 5, comma 0. So don't forget, every non-vertical line has an equation of the form y equals mx plus b. y is your output variable. m is the slope of the line, which will be a specific number. x is your input variable. And b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept, which will also be a specific number. So already, they're telling us the slope is negative 3. I can plug that in for m. I've got y equals negative 3 times x plus b. However, b is not any old y-coordinate. So you can't just say, ooh, let me use that y-coordinate 0 there. That's not true. b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept, which means of the point on the y-axis. But if you were to plot 5, comma 0, that's not on the y-axis. That's on the x-axis. So instead, we've got to do some computation. Well, we need the equation of the line that goes through this point 5, comma 0. So I should be able to plug that point 5, comma 0 in for x and y temporarily, which will give me an equation with just b in it, which I can solve for. So let's do that. Let's plug in 0 temporarily for y, because y is not always 0. It's just this particular scenario. Negative 3 times, in place of x, I'm going to put 5, plus b. So I'm, so I'm temporarily plugging in the point 5, comma 0. What I mean by that is that in my final answer, I won't have 5 for x and 0 for y. The input variable x will be in my final answer, and the output variable y will be in my final answer. But we have now an equation in one variable, specifically b. So we can solve for b. Of course, negative 3 times 5 is negative 15 plus b. And then to isolate b, you to add 15 to both sides, and 0 plus 15 is 15. So now we've got the m value, the slope is negative 3, and now we know that the b value is 15. We can write the equation of the line, which is of the form y equals mx plus b. So y equals m is negative 3 times x plus b is specifically 15. This is the equation of the line that has slope negative 3 and passes through the point 5 comma 0. Now, the next question, the line, find the equation of the line that runs through the points negative 1, 7, and 3, comma, negative 1. Notice this time we don't have the slope, nor do we have the y-intercept. So we're given a little bit less information. We're still going to build off of the y equals mx plus b idea, but we don't currently already have m or b. But if you can recall from our previous studies, you can compute the slope by taking the difference in the y-values negative 1 minus 7 over the difference in the x values in the same order. So 3 minus negative 1. Using our slope formula, we get negative 8 over 4. Negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. So we had to do a little bit more work this time. m was not given to us, but we now have it. So once we've got this m value of negative 2, we can proceed in the same way that we did up here. So I'm going to plug that m value in. I've got y equals negative 2 times x plus b I don't know yet. But to get b, I can temporarily plug in an ordered pair for x and y. Well, in this case, you can choose whether you want to use the negative 1, 7, or if you want to use the 3, comma, negative 1. They both will give you the exact same b value. So I'm just going to plug in negative 1, comma, 7. So 7 goes in for y equals negative 2 times for x. We're going to put in negative 1 plus b. And now you have an equation with just b in it, so you can solve for that variable b. We've got 7 equals negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. And then, of course, if you subtract 2 from both sides, you get b equals 5. Putting it all back together, we have our equation is y equals the m value is negative 2 times x plus the b value is 5. This line goes through the two points, negative 1, 7, and 3, negative 1. Here's another example. This table represents a linear relationship between x and y. And we want to find the slope of the line, 
we want to find the y-intercept, and we find, want to find the equation of the line. So first, to find the slope of the line, we could do we could do the same thing we did in the previous problem, where we had to compute the slope. Just take any two of the points. I'll take the, say these two, and subtract the y values, five minus one, over the difference in the x values, two minus one. Five minus one is four. Two minus one is one. Four divided by one is four. Now, this is not the only way to see the slope here. I'll show you another way in a minute. But let's just complete this thought process. So we've got a slope of 4. Part B asks for what's the y-intercept of the line. Well, we're not doing any computations in this one. The y-intercept of the line, by definition, is the point on the line on the y-axis. Well, that is precisely this point right here. 0, negative 3 is on the y-axis. So that is the y-intercept of the line. No computations here at all. Then finally, what's the equation of the line? Since it's a non-vertical line, it has a slope of 4. We can build right off of our y equals mx plus b form. m, in this case, we saw is 4 times x plus b. b is precisely the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. So y equals 4x minus 3. This problem is now complete. But I want to show you another way you could have thought about finding the slope. And it's a very important uh, way of thinking about the slope when it comes to applications, which will be coming up in one of your future videos. So let me just first get these, these lines out of the way here. And the slope of a line, while it's the change in y over the change in x, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, another way of thinking about the slope, the slope is the change in y as x increases by 1. This is equivalent to all the other representations of slope that we thought about. Rise over run, difference in change in y over change in x, all of them are equivalent. Change in y as x increases by 1. So if you look between two successive points where the x values increased by 1, how much did the y values change by? Well, it went from 1 to 5 went up by 4, so that precisely is the slope. So we could have avoided doing this computation using the formula in this scenario. We'll get some more practice with thinking about slope this way in some coming problems.